made it. <laughs> I think we're out. I think we're online. If you're here with us, let me know. Would you in the chat? The people are not seeing anything. No picture. No picture. No picture. Hunter Murray's got it though. Lisa Mary Marie's got it. Can you guys see us? Can you hear us? This started off exactly the way I thought it would as a complete and utter disaster. <laughs> but we did get it working. That's the good thing. Okay. We got it working eventually. Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, what, 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 what? Hold up, hold up. Skype window. Yeah. Fix we, need fix, we need to fix Fuck. this Skype window so that we can see El Caney. Oh, here we go. Boom. 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 How's everyone doing? I fixed it. I fixed it. So <laughs> if you're curious what <laughs> happened, we were starting and I didn't realize that I, my, my webcam can't be used for both Skype and my broadcaster that I'm, that I'm using to stream this to you live. And so I had to, on the fly, via my quick wit, figure out how the hell this is going to work. And I did. It's still kind of janky, but uh, it is working. And yes, I am wearing two different microphones. <laughs> <laughs> Which first Buster pointed out, and then Leander pointed out, and now you're pointing out. So thank you for that. If you're curious why I'm wearing two mics, this one is so I can hear myself because I'm wearing these closed earphones so I can hear what the computer's doing. And this lovely schlong right here is what I'm using so that you all can <laughs> hear me. <laughs> Plus, it's nice and long, and you know I like big mics. And we've got El Caney live from his deck at home because he had completely forgotten that we were doing this today. Ching -ching. And we're not going to get a tour of the cult cast or the uh, Cultimac World Headquarters. And Buster is live from Salt Lake City, Utah. People are complaining that we got a half a screen. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Uh, let's do this. And let's do... Uh, let's go like this. Boom. Boom. How about that, y'all? How about that, y'all? Is that better? That should be better. There we go. As you can tell, I'm not very good at this yet. So pardon me for the plethora of errors I've already made. Welcome to the Cultcast 300 live extravaganza. It's going to be filled with so much fun, so many good times. This is going to be an event that we all remember for many years to come. <laughs> or at least for many hours. <laughs> you may count the get. <laughs> My name is Aaron Elijah. Joining me today, Buster Heine in the Hunter Orange puffy jacket. What's up? And the complete lack of beard. I apologize for that. Although it looks like it's coming back, bro. Oh, yeah, a little bit. I, I shaved a week ago. Oh, you shaved a week ago? Oh, okay. Well, yeah. uh, also joining us, one, look at that handsome devil, L. Caney. <laughs> he's on Beer 7, I he's also feeling great. A, I shaved a week ago, too, look. Yeah, you're looking real sharp. I can never and he's wearing his glasses so today. He looks, he looks very debonair in his glasses, doesn't he? So much more intelligent. <laughs> Not that you don't normally look intelligent, but uh, <laughs> this, this definitely adds to the it IQ helps, factor. And for helps. those of you that are concerned... I just want to. I just want to point out right from the start. Yes, I realize it looks like my fro is eating my head. I don't know what happened, but this uh, this day, I think it might be a little bit more humid than my fro likes, and so it will probably continue getting larger for the entirety of the broadcast. Eventually, filling out the frame probably to here. At which point, we know it's time to wrap up, and we'll go ahead and do that. So, here's how this is going to work. Uh, we're just going to hang out, and if you have any questions for us, feel free to drop those in the chat, and we'll answer any that you have, and hopefully you have at least a couple, so we're not just going to sit here in awkward silence the whole time. And uh, Why don't we yeah. discuss the plot of the new uh, Blade Runner movie? Oh my uh, I haven't gosh. seen it yet. Oh, you haven't? Well, let me go ahead and tell you what the main go spoilers ahead. are, Buster. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine incident. with that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not even sure I could if I wanted to because I was sitting there, <laughs> probably, probably sixty percent of the movie, just thinking I don't even know what's happening right now. Right. But I'm so engrossed, I don't even care. Leander, did you see it? 
I did. Yeah, I went out on Thursday night. I took my two sons. You know, they were badgering me to go see it. Yeah. Uh, so I got we got tickets for the IMAX, and we were there in the first screening. And uh, you know, they were disappointed. My son said, "Long, boring, confusing." It was. It was kind of long. I saw a 11:30 p.m. showing, and oh my god, I got out there at four in the morning. <laughs> it was, was, was dawn. Like, I kept looking at my watch. There were there were roosters crowing when I got right, out. Right, let's go get some breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> the milkman was doing his doing his round. <laughs> well, don't you don't I you think to, uh, it desperately needed editing? I like long movies, and as someone who likes long movies, I thought it was I thought it was perfect as is. I I was completely enthralled. I was engrossed from start to finish. It did feel a little slow getting started, but it. It's not. It's not like a Mission Impossible movie where you go in and it's like boom, bang, and there's motorcycle rides and people jumping off stuff. It's not like that. It's it's an artful cinematic experience, oh. and it builds <laughs> off the 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 the, 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 the first movie, and I thought it did a brilliant job doing that, and I I loved it. It was probably it it will, it will probably be my favorite movie of the year. Do you not agree? No. Did you, did you like it less than your sons? Uh, I thought, yeah, I actually, I, I thought, you know, that the sets were amazing, the visuals, that it was really, really striking visually. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, uh, you know, like I could have done, and, and I thought the the, uh, the main baddie, the, the woman, yeah, the, uh, she was awesome. She was she really was good. incredible, yeah. Um, so I'd love to see more of her, but like all of the scenes with his girlfriend, I think they, should, they could have lost all of that. Everything you didn't like happened. that? No, I thought it was that was out of my mind. See, the reason those scenes were in there is the same is the same reason that I like the first Blade Runner is that these people are called synthetic, right? And you don't really understand how human they are until you see their interpersonal relationships. And at the end of the first Blade Runner, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, well, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll try to be vague. I'll try to be vague. At the end of the first Blade Runner, the question for me was, well, how human are these synthetic people? Because they think that they're very human and they're understandably upset that they have shortened lifespans and they're trying to figure out how they can live longer. And they have all these relationships with each other and there's love involved. And so they're angry that they're going to die. And the second, the second Blade Runner, that girlfriend relationship, I thought humanized him more than the relationships in the first movie because he's so desperate to have a relationship with people because the world treats him as a second hand, even a third, third class citizen. And he's so desperate to have a relationship that he ends up having one with a digital character like that. I thought that was incredibly beautiful. That, that really was poignant to me. Yeah. They're called replicants, Erfan, not synthetics. Sorry. Sorry. God. I'm, I'm uh, Ninja. I, I have too many franchises that have synthetics. I, uh, the, the game fallout four has synthetics and they call them synthetics. Uh, that was my reference. So now that I've explained that to you, Leonard, do you love the movie much more? <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks for mansplaining it to me. <laughs> you know what? You know what else I'm doing? I'm mans. I love it. I'm going to go see it again tonight. Yeah. My, my legs are spread out like now. this right now, too. I'm just man spreading while I mansplain to you. <laughs> if we were on the subway, I'd have my legs out like this and I'd just be telling you why you need to like this movie. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see it again. And actually, I was going to bring this up on, uh, I, might, I might still bring this up since there's only like 10 people here on, on our future cult cast. I am using a new service called Movie Pass. Have you guys heard of it? Yeah, I heard about that. Is it Have you worth heard of it, it, Leander? Um, like ten bucks for Pass? unlimited movies. You, well, it's uh, yeah, how much is a month? Ten bucks a it's, month. Well, and you it's ten dollars a month it. now. It used to be thirty, and in some markets they were charging hundred dollars. And this service is bonkers. I I pay ten bucks a month, and you can see one movie every twenty four hours. So you can see oh. as many movies in a, in a month as you could possibly want to. Uh, and you can't see IMAX, you can't see 3D movies, but I, I don't care about that. Yeah. So you can just go see movies again and again and again and again. So I'm going to go see Blade Runner again this weekend. But <laughs> but I think Movie is Pass it... is going to be going out of business in the next six months, quite honestly. Cause I, I remember reading how... about it. Yeah, they were saying yeah that it um, it probably couldn't. Uh, you know, they're losing money on every every you know every every customer. But can it, <laughs> right. is it restricted on what movies you can go see? I guess not, right? No, you could see any movie at virtually any theater. All the theaters in my really? area, ex with the exception, I think, of one, which is like a specialty theater that's 
isn't like a, like a regal or something like that and every theater in my area you can you can go and see movies at and it's it's a little confusing to use you have to use the app to like check into the theater you have to be within 100 yards of the theater to actually check in and then that activates your card and then you just go buy the ticket as normal and they send you like a debit card that you can use and i saw an interview with the ceo and he said that they are literally paying the movie theater the asking price for every ticket that you buy. <laughs> you're paying you're paying movie pass ten dollars a month. Right. My ticket was my my only ticket that I've bought so far far was fourteen dollars, wow. and I'm gonna go see more. And I'm like, how the hell are they gonna be around in six months? This seems like the most terrible business model ever. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, get it while the going's good, right? Before right. Out of cash. Yeah. I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be like the captain on the Titanic. I'm going down with that ship. I'm gonna be a subscriber right to the very end. Um, I'm gonna check that out because I used to love going to see in the movies, but Tracy won't let me anymore. So right, because it's, it's way <laughs> too expensive. And the and the other thing is, a you can see movies more than once. Like normally, if you see a great movie, you see it once and you're done. At least that's what I do because I'm not gonna spend fifty dollars a month on movies. But but two. You can go see movies that you wouldn't see in the movie theater because there's a lot of movies that come out where you're you're like, I'm not going to go pay $15 to see this, right? I'll just wait for it to come out on Netflix. Right, yeah, yeah, but yeah. But now you'll actually go see them so I can go see well, my best friend's my best friend's wedding part two. Yeah, right. Can't wait to see that one. <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you, here, here's a tip. Don't go see It because It is shit. It. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Eloquent as always. And don't go see American Made. Uh, I got so excited about Blade Runner. I actually turned up a, a week ago. Oh, you didn't like American Made? No, it was really... Um, it was so immoral. I mean, like, he's running guns. Tom Cruise the, was awesome Tom in that Cruise movie. And, well, it's fun for him, but, like, if you think about what they're trying to... How they're trying to make a gun-running drug smuggler into a hero, mm -hmm. it's well, deeply, deeply immoral. I, I don't uh, like it because of that. I didn't think they made him like a hero. Yeah, they made the whole thing oh, I don't know. Like a, big, a big lock, right? So he... Well, it's like the U.S. wasn't like doing anything really good itself in that movie either. Like they were instigating the whole thing. Everybody in that movie was an anti-hero or or a bad guy. So yeah, and the, the, the you know the the most rational and the nicest people in it were Carlos, you know, Escobar and the Colombian drug smugglers. But I, I you yeah. know, I think I think making a it was so deeply immoral, you know, like making a making the whole thing seem like a lark, you know, running like you know coke and then guns down south, and that's oh, all just a big lark. It's all just a big game. Oh, you know? you're such a prude. That sounds like a great party. <laughs> well, I don't know. Okay, yeah. M16. It's, it's not though, like because look, look at you know like the movies like The Godfather, you know, which uh -huh. which, which I are, haven't seen, which are much more powerful movies about about you know gangsters and and crime and and the toll that crime, you know. Uh, exacts on on people uh -huh. or goodfellas or whatever you know i mean like goodfellas is a lark of a movie but it's much more disturbing much more powerful oh, i can't even watch goodfellas it's it's so violent and joe pesci is such an insane nut job in that movie right. i can hardly stand it yeah 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 i could I, I mean like saying that i didn't enjoy some of it and it made me want to fly a plane i want to go get a pilot's license now in fact i want to oh, do okay. it i like to be a drug smuggler <laughs> my next career <laughs> well if the uh if the if the pilot's license doesn't work out you can always just get yourself an el camino and hide the uh the kilo of cocaine in the old poop chutes <laughs> <laughs> definitely not going to get pulled over by ice if you uh if you're driving to el camino across the border at well, we, an hour. we saw those movies because we turned up a week early for blade runner like i've been, been such a dope i bought them I, I turned up, I was so excited about seeing the movie, I turned up a uh -huh. week early, uh -huh. and the woman's like, um, she looked at the tickets and she goes, you, you do know this is next week, right? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and my sons are just like this. <laughs> oh, oh, because your sons thought they were going to see it? Yeah, and they were like, <laughs> so we went and got tickets for um, American Made, and then uh, snuck into it after that. So we saw two movies. <laughs> snuck in. We saw two movies that night. Are you serious? Did you, you, you saw a double feature? Yeah. Unauthorized double feature. <laughs> I haven't done that for years, like years and years, but yeah, we did. My son oh, wanted to see awesome. it, so he was disappointed by American Made, so he wanted to see it. He wanted to see it, so we snuck into that. I, you know, it never really. I, I liked the first one, which was 
I think what like it came out like 1987 80s? or something. The yeah. end was terrible though. Is the ending in the second it is bad as the first or did they did they, did they Yeah, the ending's terrible and so is the middle and the beginning. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not uh it's not an obscure French movie with subtitles in English, so I could expect no less. I uh, I wasn't really excited about that one. I will say though, I was extremely excited for Blade Runner two thousand forty nine. So much so that I actually went and saw an opening night. I'm surprised that you didn't like it, Leander. I thought that this would kind of be right up your alley. Yeah, and well, me too. It, ha I it hasn't really done high... as well at the box office either. It's only made like thirty yeah, million dollars the first weekend. Tanking, yeah, yeah, tanking. It's tanking. not tanking. It's just not doing as well as they had hoped. Yeah, it may, it may, it'll be like the original Blade Runner, right? It'll, you know, it'll, it'll only That's find exactly it, right. the DVD or, you know, streaming, and it'll take years, 30 years later, they'll be saying, oh, my God. They'll, <laughs> they'll make their money thing. back on it 30 years later. The first, if you haven't seen the first one, which I'm sure many of you haven't, I saw the first one for the first time, I don't know, in the last three months, and I Jeez. saw the remastered version, mm -hmm. and... <sighs> <laughs> my world was expanded. I, I love sci-fi and I love dystopian sci-fi especially. And it is at the apex of, of those crossroads. It's one of the best dystopian movies I think I've ever seen. If not, if not the best. You like the original Blade Runner, right? Leo? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm a huge fan of the original Blade Runner. But it has everything going for it, you know, that this movie didn't, including... They're not that different. It's much quicker. You know, like old, old Ridley Scott, uh, mm -hmm. you know, knew how to edit. He knew how to, like... Um, you know, to cut these movies down, you know, like yeah. if you look at all the deleted scenes and the same is true of like alien and stuff like that. You know, um, he was really, he was really rigorous at edit, editing. I think it was yeah. one of his great, you know, unsung skills as a mm -hmm. movie maker, very, very, uh, you know, like told very tight stories, but also very atmospheric. I mean, there's a ton of atmosphere and the story in Blade Runner really doesn't, the original Blade Runner is kind of a yeah. little bit kind of nonsensical, but there are so many great performances in that. Rutger Hauer is so astonishing oh, as Roy yeah. Batty. Oh, and, yeah. um, the you know the scene when um, well I was about to give a huge spoiler for a thirty year old <laughs> movie I better keep my mouth shut okay <laughs> yeah yeah don't don't do that and the well, soundtrack to that movie is astonishing you know oh yeah it's so good way ahead of its time and the atmosphere the atmosphere that they create in both of those movies it is just thick and and you just dive into it and you can just feel it surrounding you the entire movie like where, when they're in Las Vegas Leander in the second movie and it's just like oh. bright orange and there's like that haze everywhere i was in heaven i love stuff like that and that that was throughout the entire movie they create an unbelievable atmosphere they create a feeling that no other movie has ever created i i don't think as far as atmosphere and color is concerned like the colorists in those movies are are as good it, as it gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I, I agree. I totally agree. The visuals are totally astonishing. But that, I, I'm going to, I'm going to wait for someone to do like a soup, you know, like an edit, you know, when they. Cut you it. want like the seven minute. Yeah. Version right, on, totally YouTube. On, on YouTube, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, they cut it down to an hour and a half. I mean, that would. I think if they cut out half that movie, it would be much better. They could totally stream that that movie, and it would have the same, you know, same story, same impact, same idea, yeah. same themes, but it would just be a lot more watchable. Oh man, I couldn't disagree more. I'm waiting for the director's cut. I want it to be like seven hours long. <laughs> I want the seven hour long That's version. Like... <laughs> did, you, did you watch the new Star Wars trailer? No, what? I decided I'm done with Star what? Wars trailers. Yeah, I'm done. What? Yeah, Why? I'm done. Because you know, I heard that it reveals spoilers? too much. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think it's a lot of misdirection, kind of like the first one. But, you know. You think so? Because it looked like uh, The Empire Strikes Back, right? Yeah. She's gone to the did. dark side. She gets all the Jedi training. Yo and, yeah. You know, Luke instead of you know, Yoda. <laughs> she finds out. Um, uh, what was that name? Is Count Dooku is her father. <laughs> 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 One of the worst characters in the entire Star Trek world or Star War Star Wars world. Okay, let's uh, let's do some let's do some questions and comments from people as long as we got people in here. Let's see here. Blue Bluey the Ho the Bogan says hello from Australia. Good day, mate. Imran Ahmad says sup, y'all. Ann Johnson thinks Buster's looking very good today. I agree. Nick Corn wants to know where Christopher Walken is. He is around here somewhere. Let me see. Oh, he's under my desk. I didn't even know he was in there. Wow. He really he's really good at hiding. Uh, let's see here. Xavier Campon says, Leander looks like Buster from the near future. <laughs> Buster, you got any glasses over there? Let's see. Okay, here we go. Here's a question. Matt7895 wants to know, are you all getting the X? Lay it on me. <laughs> Leander, I don't even have to ask you. Yeah, of course Leander will. But I'm are with Buster, though. Leander? 
Well, yeah, for professional reasons, but I'm with Buster. I want, I, want, I want the big screen version. I want the larger one. Yeah. You want, the, you want one that's even bigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might but be able to get on board with that. Huh? Yeah, me I might too. be able to get on board with that. I mean, it would be as big as the Plus is, which is right. kind of too big, but maybe it would, well, it there would was, be like a little bit smaller. No, if it's the same size as the Plus, but all screen, that would just be 6.5 awesome. inches of just power in your hand, you know? 6.5 <laughs> inches. 6.5 inches of power. That's how that's 6. 5 is ad. important. Makes it <laughs> yeah, above average. Wow. I can see that tagline <laughs> on the on the billboard. <laughs> Tim Cook is gonna be he's gonna pitch that and everyone's gonna be like, they're gonna be like, we can't do that. He's he's so innocent, he's just not even gonna, gonna realize that if there's any sexual thing <laughs> going with there, he's just gonna be like, oh, it just is what it is. It's just so powerful. Yeah. Uh okay, let's see here. Um Oh, did I, did I scroll down too fast? Somebody was asking me about the cult cats party beer koozies. I still have uh -huh. more of those. I've got a few more actually right back here. Maybe I'll have to give some of those out on Twitter. Let's see here. Did you guys buy Star Wars tickets yet? No, no, uh, I didn't. I'm going to wait. No, but I'll definitely see it like opening day. Yeah, me too. Me too. With my movie pass, if I can, see it. <laughs> I'll be in the front row there like this. Those will be the only tickets left. Let's see here. Max Sources says, "Any plans on going to CES 2018, Leander?" Uh, actually, I was discussing it. I don't know. Yeah, we, we still haven't uh, made up our minds. We okay. could uh -huh. we can discuss it until the very last minute because we have a uh, uh, we have a friend who has a uh, like a condo there, so we can. What? Stay. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. That's good for you. Okay, let's see Same here. Place we always stay. Huh? Same place we always stay. <laughs> yeah, that same the dump, cockroach yeah. motel. I like that place. <laughs> I don't know. Do you yeah, want to go? It's cozy. You could you could ask the cockroach and the rats to go get you like a snack from the kitchen, and they're like, sure. Like, right back. Dude, as long as you don't put Alex C. Heath in my room with him puking all over, oh, that's dude, the only thing I can. What yeah. a lightweight. What a lightweight. <laughs> he was crying the whole time. Jeez. Asking for his mom. Let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Fitz. Jean Baptiste. Oh man, I want to say that again. Fitz Jean Baptiste wants to know what happened to your beard, Buster. I haven't had the beard all year, man. I've been Dude. keeping it trim. I know. I know. You know, for the well, ladies. Yeah, the ladies do like a uh, a slim and slender man with a closely shaved face, but they also like they also like forest beard. That's just yeah. It's a powerful it's a toss up. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Yosef K wants me to know that the replicants not synthetics. Thank you, Grammar Cop. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, have Jean Baptiste again wants to know: Have you guys had any problems with iOS 11? My Bluetooth keeps dropping off, and I'm getting crashes. Me too, dude. I'm having problems with both of those, and my and the restarting too. Like my phone will just randomly go black, and then I have to wait oh, ten really? seconds for it to like you know catch up and and turn back on, and sometimes it restarts. But I just I just uploaded or just updated to the new beta version of iOS ten point or eleven point zero point two or eleven point two. Buster, correct me if I don't sound like a total moron. Which one was it that just came out? Eleven point <laughs> zero point two <laughs> came out recently. Yeah, I just I installed the new beta. I I didn't even look to see. Oh, eleven point one beta two. Yeah, that one's beta out. two. Okay, thank with you. new emoji, bro. New emoji. Oh man, so, was it like two hundred new emoji? Something like that. Mystical there's a lot creatures. Of good ones in there too. Yeah. yeah. There's uh there's like a Count Dracula dude. There's a whole bunch of uh, great ones in in the new beta. I tried to tweet one out, but uh, if you don't have the new beta installed, you don't get to see it. You just see a bunch of squiggly lines. Let's see here. Did any of you get the iPhone 8? Lander, you got one, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I'm talking on it right now. How do you like it? I like it. I, I really like it a lot. And I was gonna write like a an elegy to it. You know, like how much I like it. Yeah. I really want to get one, but with the X right around the corner, it just, I mean, for me, it just doesn't make sense to buy one and then buy another one, especially considering they're pretty much the exact same phone. Uh, well, the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 7. Uh, it's well, it's a lot. Like, it's, a, it's faster in the, in the, you know, the camera improvements. And I haven't done a lot of photography on it yet, which was, was the reason I was holding off. Because, you know, the, the camera improvements, I think, are one of the big reasons people like it. Mm -hmm. I yeah. messed around with the studio lighting, and it was like I, I got mixed results with it. Um, but I'm still a lot oh, of you, your face looks amazing right there. <laughs> not, it's, and it's not even on. I mean, you know, this is no no effects at all. You should show us your deck real fast, Leander. Uh, I don't know if you want to see it. It's a bit of a mess. Is it covered with turds? Yeah, we're, looking at, we're, look, we're looking after my mom's dogs. And he's oh, been, yeah. Okay. That's why. Yeah. Where is the dog? Um, he's inside. 
Um, that looks pretty good. Thing. Yeah. Isn't he usually out there, like like biting your ankle and pulling on your jeans? <laughs> yeah, he's he's come on his account. I thought I, your dog is a total psychopath, isn't he? Yeah, Bernie. And you my named him Bernie. Him, yeah, we call him Bernie. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Oh, you want a tour of Cult Command? Um, you know, I I can't do that right now because. Uh, <laughs> My camera, I, I wired my camera through my monitor arm, and I can't pick it up off of the monitor, unfortunately. I should have thought about that. I can give you like a little quick tour like this. Uh, they got me um, my camera equipment over there. And boy, this camera makes it look like this room is just like a little box. My guitar over there. It's just a, it's kind of a narrow, long room. It's like uh, 200 square feet. And uh, let's see, you wanna see the ceiling? There's the ceiling. Ooh. Damn. <laughs> Some of my stuff right there on my emoji or um, my amiibo, I should say, and my cool little toys of one of which I just posted about on my YouTube channel, which if you haven't watched, I suggest you do because if you don't have a girlfriend, this is going to This will help you get oh, one dude. or help you keep not having a girlfriend. Uh, it will help you get a girlfriend. And if you, if you don't want a girlfriend, don't watch it. Okay. Because this is you'll just become way too cool, huh? Girls love the kind of stuff that I just showed in this new video. They they <laughs> absolutely are attracted to it. It's like a powerful magnet to them. Have you ever seen this the forty year old virgin Buster? Yeah, yeah, I have. So like all the, all the, the dolls that he, that he keeps. Yeah. yeah. Girls just like love you. that stuff. Okay. And that was kind yeah. of the point of the review. Um and remember at the end what happened at the end of the forty year old virgin? Oh, the girl is just like, Man, I just want you to keep all your toys so that we can Get naked among them and stuff. <laughs> do, do me up. <laughs> and yeah. they, got mar they got married, which is what I was getting at. But, uh, but yeah, let's see here. Uh, go ahead and drop your comments. If you want us to answer any of your questions, uh, go ahead and drop those in the chat. People are complaining about battery drain on iOS 11. Have you guys had a problem with that? Because yeah, I know yeah, a lot of people yeah. complain about so, that. Really? Uh, Mine? Yeah. Uh, my iPhone 7 Plus has been pretty solid, actually. So, Yeah, I haven't had any issues either. And uh, this is my phone. People are asking what phones we have. This is my phone with a Rhino Shield crash guard bumper case, which I absolutely love. And uh, I did a video about this particular case and some other minimalist cases recently as well. If you want to check that out, you can see some of my favorite ones. But look at this. You never even seen bumper cases anymore. You never see them Dude. anymore. And you can actually get to enjoy the design of your phone, which is, you know, but something that Johnny Ive wants for you. They don't protect much, you know? This thing's pretty protective. It's got a lip right here that goes over the iPhone on the front and the back. And I would argue this is more protective than some of the thinner cases out there. Actually, they say that this phone has a 11 foot, uh, up to 11 feet of drop protection. I've seen people test this on YouTube where they just throw it up in the air and let it land. And the phone Bogus. comes out unscathed every single time. Hey, it was tested by, uh, what's that dude's name? He used to be a New York Times tech reporter and then he went to work for Yahoo. Like Wait, Bill? Oh, Pogue. Yes, David Pogue. Do, are okay. you saying David Pogue is a dirty liar? I could say that because I don't really trust David Pogue for anything. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> he might be a dirty liar, but he did do the tests and it, and the and the phone came out unscathed every single time. Okay, let's see here. What Mac is everyone rocking lately? Asked Jake Weber. I'm using a 2013 MacBook Pro. 2013. Because there's virtually no performance difference Damn. between the 2013 and the 2017. I'm sad to say. Which is why I'm waiting for Cannon Lake the Intel chips that are actually supposed to start giving you performance increases again, but those seem like they've been delayed uh, for the MacBook Pro, so we'll see what happens with that. Buster, what do you got? I'm on a 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro, just Damn, a baseline model. Oh, yeah. Super high rolling. Integrated and graphics and shiz. <laughs> you got the integrated? Dang. That's like some serious <laughs> gaming power right there. 15, 16 frames per oh, second. Yeah. <laughs> Later, what do you got? Uh, an iMac, 27-inch um, iMac at the office. Uh, can't oh, remember yeah. what year it is. and It's, it's a f couple of years old now. Yeah, it's a couple of years old, I think, right? 2015? Probably even, no, probably even older than that. Probably 2013. 
Mm. I thought it was Ryan... the sexy retina one. It's not the retina <laughs> iMac? Yeah, it is. Isn't it, Leander? Yeah, it's a retina. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Retina. Maybe it's newer than that. I can't remember. 2015. I thought it was 2015, but you bought it. I didn't, so I'm going to go with what you're saying. Oh, you know what it is? It is a newer one, yeah, because I had an older one and I uh, upgraded to the 2015, yeah, with the retina. Right, screen. right. Uh, Corey Bryant wants to know, do you think we'll see AirPods 2 next year? If so, what new features do you think they'll add? I don't think they're going to update update the AirPods anytime soon. Why would they? Buster, what do you think? They would, I think possibly because it, it just matters on the W2 chip. That would be the only thing that's new, uh, mm-hmm. I think, because that's the best thing about the AirPods. It's not really the sound. It's the Bluetooth connectivity. So if they make the W2 chip even better, like maybe they could come out with new ones next year alongside the iPhone. As far as new features, I can't even think what they would add. Shorter They're... stems? That's all okay, I would care about. Yeah. So I, would, <laughs> I would be down for some shorter stems, too. Leander, what do you think? Colors. Maybe they'll do them in different colors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Black kind ones of an would obvious be cool. One. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Maybe they'd, they'd, they'd match the colors of the iPhones. Oh, yeah. They make, make, make some rose gold ones and some space gray. I, I'm maybe. kind of a fan of the white ones, though. The white ones are so clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm seeing okay. more and more of them now as well. You see a lot. Of, I see a lot, quite a lot on the street these days. I saw a lot in Asia, actually. Huh. A lot oh, in, uh, in Asia. Yeah, in Kuala Lumpur, I saw a lot of them. I virtually never see them in, on, in people's ears now, and I always notice when they have them on because they look so dorky. Even when yes. I wear them, I'm like, I look like, like such a dork right now. Yeah, like, super you dorky. You just look like such a major right Apple fanboy. <laughs> yeah, I right just got moment, these... even more so when the AirPods are in. I got these Braggy Dash Pro earbuds. They look, look way cool. less dorky. Yeah, I mean, they kind of just go and touch your ear You kind of do look like Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like something kind of Star Trek even. <laughs> yeah, you do look like you're, uh, you're part of the Star Trek crew. Let's see. Fitz Jean Baptiste back with another one. He says, Leonard, don't you miss the UK? Um, sometimes, but like, not particularly. Trump is no. the president. Well, yeah, you know, the, I gotta admit, the current political atmosphere in America, you know, is making me a little bit homesick. Yeah, you homesick. wanna go home to Macron, into Mac- Macron's warm embrace. Yeah, you know, uh, Europe is looking awesome, but you know, with Britain, with Brexit, I mean, it's just, it's just another disaster over there. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what else do you miss about the UK, Leander? Perhaps the bar fights, because you know, in the UK, if you punch a guy's <laughs> face while drinking, it's legal, right? But here, they, can you believe it? They throw you in jail for that. Yeah, you can't even punch a guy in the face for looking at you the wrong way in the U.S., which is just a sad state of affairs. Yeah, I, I do miss the pubs. I gotta admit, British pubs. I think I miss the the British pubs, and I've only been like in a couple of them. I just feel like it'd be much more rowdy than here. Yeah, Let's yeah. see here. Bluey the Ho- Bluey the Bogan says the Pixel earbuds have a cool feature, but they make but they look like Mentos in your ear. Well, they look better than the AirPods, dude. The AirPods. Does it, is anyone watching right now? Does anyone actually like the look of the AirPods? Do we have even one person that likes it? I would be surprised if we did. It's just, it's a very weird look, isn't it, Buster? I think it would look odd as fuck, but yeah. Oh, dude, I can't even bleep that out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it's live. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's live. You got to just deal with it. Uh, the Phil and Pam says, anyone using an older Mac than mine? Uh, late 2008 MacBook Pro. How do I, how do I boot her out of the live show? Is there <laughs> <to do that? laughs> Let's see. I can't do it. I'll have to figure, I'll have to Google, Google that after the show so we can be prepared for comments like that next time. Let's see here. What is the collective term for the cult cast listeners? I just totally scrolled past your question. Who was that? I don't remember who that was. I'm gonna look for it. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't have a, a collective term for cult cast listeners. I feel like that's kind of degrading to do that to people to, yeah. to attach a label from from what we do onto them. Um, and there's some YouTube channels that I watch that do that, and they just they just call them like their first name hyphen something like the Jake <laughs> Paulers, right? <laughs> it's like the hell is that? <laughs> it sounds so stupid. But maybe we could come up with a name. For, for the listeners, Lander, do you have anything clever that we should call them? Cultists. The cultists. There you go. We can get like a uh, like a chant that we do at the beginning of every episode, oh. <laughs> and then we can sacrifice an Android device. <laughs> <laughs> that could get expensive though, so 
Maybe oh, not. Oh, no. We could just buy a cheap one. I, I think they got $15 Android phones. Oh, there you go. You know, if we yeah. wanted, really wanted to be hardcore, I can get like a, I can get us like a goat, and we can just kill the goat live on live on the stream every week. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna get on great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Lots of people on old Max. That's crazy. Uh, here's one, for, another one from Bluey the the Bogan. Here's a question for Airfon in the next years iPhone has 512 gigabyte option. Which will you get, if any? 100% will. Let me look up into the sky why I decipher that question. Okay, so I think you're asking me if if a 512 gigabyte option came, comes out, will I buy it? I will not buy it, especially after... Uh. Well, I'll probably have to buy it because Apple will give you the option of a 16 gigabyte iPhone or a 512 gigabyte iPhone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? That's going to be their next offering. But I don't see the point in 512 anymore not no, not since ios 11 not since heif and hevc they've they've had the size of photos and videos in ios 11 there's no point to get 512 i think i i think i'm going to go for the for the 64 gigabyte iphone 10 when that comes out because i think that's going to be that's going to be plenty really? let's see here what's that that's interesting what I'm are just... you what are your thoughts on that buster oh i would go 512 all the way more is better. Oh yeah, why? Why do you need to have five twelve? Well, you gotta have. Like I've said, I shoot a lot of video on my iPhone. I shoot a lot of video on my iPhone too, but I guess you're kind of out and and uh, yeah, you're probably doing way more than I am. Let's yeah, and I don't have a place to dump it a lot of times. Don't don't you have iCloud Photo Library? Yeah, but you know, if you're out in the outdoors, you don't want to like fill up all your storage. Like sixty four, I could see myself filling that up in a weekend. Yeah, I guess if you're using your iPhone as a production device to actually create video for content that you're going to be doing, I get that. Let's see here. Nick Korn wants to say, I was going to say wants to make a question, but he's not making a question. He's just making a comment. The inside of the uh, the AirPods case gets dirty. Man, so dirty. Lander, what does yours look like? Oh, it, yeah, like a garbage can. It looks disgusting, doesn't it? <laughs> I usually take a Q-tip every week and clean it out. Uh, yeah, I, 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 didn't bother. I, I, I didn't care. You don't care if it's dirty? You're just going to go with it? I can't be any dirty than my ears. <laughs> You're like, if I don't clean my ears, I'm not cleaning my AirPods. Right. <laughs> Let's see here. Jean-Luc Parent says, uh, like a band name, Airfon and the Canies. Oh, dude, we could be like a barbershop quartet. We'd sing like, <laughs> we'd sing like angels. Angels. We can get matching outfits. That would actually be pretty cool. If we ever did a live show to get like matching barbershop quartet outfits and do a little singing. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> Be cute, uh, I guess. <laughs> Lander, no, not not feeling it. No. Okay. No. Well, it would it would definitely uh, it would definitely sound good. Oh, Jean Luc Parent wants us to call to refer to ourselves as the Canies. That's more <laughs> like it. <laughs> That's, right. That's right and proper. Okay. Anyone bought the Apple Watch Series Three? Is what Lisa Marie is asking. Lander's got one. Of course, Leander has. <laughs> Can't get the damn thing to work though. I won't connect to my T-Mobile account. Oh. Because uh. I have a business account and there's a authentication issue. Oh really? I spent the first weekend like trying to work it out, and there's a solution, but it takes hours, and I just haven't got the energy to uh, to figure it out. Yeah. But that 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 watch strap looks nice and fancy. Where's oh, the yeah, yeah. lander? It's a Twister Flex. Uh, does it ever pull your arm hair out? No, nope, never. It looks like it would pull your arm hair out. No, it doesn't. It's super nice. Do you have any arm hair? I can't tell. Well, yeah, look. You got a couple on there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's a whole virtual it's, forest on there. Yeah, yeah, right. It's so, yeah, okay. And so it would pull your arm hair out if uh, if it did such a thing. But that's cool because I had somebody asking me on Twitter about that. And I was like, I don't know. No, it doesn't, it doesn't pull your arm hair out. That's a myth. <laughs> it's a myth. It does give well, you a tan. Look, I've got a tan, though, like a farmer's tan, the watch tan. Can you see it? Dang, you got that in San Francisco? <laughs> <laughs> no, even more surprised I went outside. But. <laughs> Nick Korn says, in your opinion, what is the most physically beautiful device that Apple has released? Leander Caney. Physically beautiful? Yeah. I'm trying to think. Good I think question. I got one. Physically beautiful? I'm well, going to have to go with the iPhone 4. I was going to say the same thing. I think the iPhone 4 uh -huh. is gorgeous. Yeah. Or the um, the PowerBook G4. Arguably one of the best looking computers Apple ever made. What about the Cube, Leander? 
Yeah, I was going to say the cube. No, 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 people like the cube. I think the cube is is a really cool looking device. Actually, I think a lot of the older Macs look really gorgeous. So now I think they look really dated now. Off. Yeah, they do look dated, but I think stuff from the 80s looks cool and stuff from the 90s. You know, it's kind of got that vintage feel to it now. You mean really, really old Macs? Yeah, the really old Macs, like the Apple II GS. I think they're gorgeous. And they're real streamlined, the design is. I like the design language from, from Yeah, yeah, era. the old Snow White design language. Let's see here. I've had several people ask why Alex E. Heath doesn't come on anymore, which is an interesting yep. question. So Alex E. Heath moved on because he is an elitist jerk. And <laughs> we ended up we ended up firing him for that reason, and then he moved, <laughs> he moved on. Then he moved on to to uh, uh, Tech Insider, aka Business Insider. After we fired him for being an elitist jerk, and Business Insider likes elitist jerks, so they hired him, and uh, he's been over there. And we keep asking him to come back on, actually, you know, so we can make fun of him. And he is busy working, so he hasn't been able to do that. And also, you know, Business Insider can let him on sometimes, but they can't let him on the show all the time because they know how popular that we are and it makes them look <laughs> bad. You know, when, when he comes here and he gets a huge welcome and then their own podcast just suffers, you know, so you guys know how it goes. Let's see here. Gavin Smith says his favorite was the iMac G3 original Bondi blue. Solid look, at choice. look at my face right now. <laughs> That's how I feel about that one. I think that was one of the Apple's ugliest, uh, Max that they ever made. Like that whole era where they went through like the colors and stuff. Oh man, those things were hideous. Remember that that MacBook that it was the notebook? I don't even remember what it was called, Leander. You probably remember. That was orange and it looked like a toilet seat. The iBook, yeah. The, the original iBook. The iBook. <laughs> that thing was hideous. And then you opened it and the Apple logo was upside down on the back. Right. Terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well... It had a carrying I, handle, though. Oh, did it have a carrying handle? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, at the time, those they, people went oh. fucking bunkers for the, the those designs because they were so unusual, right? That no one had seen, seen anything like them. They look dated now, but at the time, they were like... Yeah, <laughs> the, the iMac looked really futuristic. <laughs> like retro-futuristic, right? Jetsons? Yeah, I would imagine at that time when all the, all the computers were like slightly yellow and boxy, that thing was somewhere... Yeah, about. yeah. Yeah, it's a total revelation. Yeah, people love to love the look of the thing. Somebody wants to know why Buster's wearing a bright orange coat. <laughs> what, what the hell, Buster? Where are you in Antarctica? I'm in Utah, and it's it's cold as balls, man. <laughs> How cold is it? Fifty? Fifty-five, sixty? Oh I don't I don't know. How are you wow, surviving man. over there? I hope you got. I don't know, man. The socks on. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't do well with the cold. Um, let's That's see why here. We... What's up, Leander? Go ahead. It's from Arizona, but isn't your air conditioning usually set at 55? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and in your house, you walk around completely stark naked. Yeah, usually. <laughs> I dressed up for the show. <laughs> Let's see here. Here's a question for you. Fitz Jean-Baptiste again says, do you guys think Apple is releasing products too quick quickly these days? More and more is going wrong. <laughs> Buster, uh, what are your thoughts on that question? Well, they're not releasing MacBooks quick enough or yeah, new Macs. Uh -huh. uh, and they're obviously not releasing new iPhones quick enough because iPhone X is delayed. Uh, and I wish they would release a new iPad sooner or later, or iPad Pro sooner rather than next year. So I, I don't think so. I think they could I think they could do more actually sometimes. Lander, what do you think? Seems like that that pace is going in fits and starts, right? People complain they weren't releasing enough products, and then they released a whole bunch of products, and now there's too many products. I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to the, the home part. I want to see that. I think it looks really uh, cool, and also the Mac Pro, the iMac Pro. Oh yeah, yeah I, I, think think they're, I think they they're they're doing too much, but they're also doing too little. And what I mean by that is they're doing so many products that they're not doing enough with the products that they have. So you end up with, with Macs that are languishing for years and years without getting updated because Apple's busy working on other things. And so I think they have too much going on. I, th I would love to see them pair back their product off. Yeah, I wish they were more honestly. consistent with the, you know, with the, with the, uh, the updates of the, of the, you know, the stable of products. Or that, There's yeah. Or, or they should get, they should hire more people <laughs> and, <laughs> and create more products in the lines that they already have. I would, I would love that actually. Uh, Trinity Con Comics wants us to know, Buster, what is the Churro Squad? 
Dude, Churro Squad, uh, check out the YouTube videos. It's just yeah. me and my friends that go cliff jumping and do stupid stuff. Yeah. And uh, we're starting a new squad, actually, with Buster called the Hoagie Crew. Which oh, no. That, that name's what? already taken, bro. Sorry. Oh, it is? Oh. Yeah. Those are the um, LA folk. What about the what about Team Torpedo? <laughs> yeah, we could we could do that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Or uh, I can come up with a the lot of other yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's like a sandwich in a group, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the pool cue pals. Oh, that's too narrow. We have to think of something that's great. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Lisa Marie wants to know what was your first Apple slash Mac product, Leander? Oh man, you probably had the very first thing they released, huh? Uh, well, uh, my dad got the original Mac mm -hmm. back in '84 mm -hmm. uh, at his work, so we used to go into his office and play with the original Mac. I think mine was an Apple II GS that my dad got for us, and it was glorious. We played games on that thing all day long, and the crazy part is is that it was expensive i think it was like three or four thousand dollars back in the 90s which is crazy to think about because apple's computers in that price range now are like you know <clears throat> the mac pro right like the crazy powerful Macs, and this is just a regular consumer grade mac let's see here mac sources wants to know how i feel about ten dollars per month for the apple watch data plan um, oh don't even get me started are you trying to trigger me bro are you trying to trigger me, bro? <laughs> Don't even get me started on that ten dollars a month. That's why I'm. That's that's the primary reason I will never buy an LTE Apple Watch. I I am not gonna give <laughs> AT and T ten dollars to use the data that I'm already paying you for. That is preposterous. I am not gonna do that. Agreed. Let's see here. What's that? No, oh, yeah, I just think it's ridiculous. It's just. Well, ridiculous. I'm probably gonna buy one too at some point. <laughs> Well, for you, it kind of makes sense because you're out in the wilderness doing cool stuff. And I'm on Wi-Fi all the time, man. I, I, I never leave, leave the city. So there's no really, there's no point for me to really have one, especially not for 10 bucks a month. Okay. This might be let, – let's wrap up with this question. We've already gone long, and uh, we need to wrap it up here. So this one comes from Nathan Therian. He says, "Do you? does anyone think Apple will come out with VR goggles, Buster? Well, well, not v virtual reality goggles, but uh, augmented reality for sure, eventually. I don't know. I think it's definitely something they're exploring, and they're obviously interested in augmented reality with AR kit and iOS 11 and the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus and iPhone X having more AR features. So, yeah, I think that's definitely something they're exploring, but I wouldn't expect them any year soon, maybe 2020 or something. Yeah, it's going to come out in the – it's going to be included for free in the glove box of your Apple car, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy an Apple car, you see the, you the numbers, goggles. snaps, that they only sold uh, 150,000 of those snap spectacles? How many? 150,000. Uh, do you mean that's not very much? No, it's nothing. I yeah, think that's I impressive, though. I wasn't surprised though. by that at all. I thought well, that I whole think? thing was a, was a huge gimmick. I mean, are there that many people oh, using yeah. Snapchat that want to wear – around goggles full time to constantly be taking snaps like snapchat isn't even as popular as it once was like instagram right. is eating snapchat well right because they're piggybacking you know they 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 covered all their features right oh and they sure they, locked them they, hard yeah <laughs> it off of Facebook. <laughs> yeah i mean i'd be in interested in some instagogs they, I, I'm they came skeptical out with that, i think like is right apple's definitely exploring ar goggles but i'm you know i'm really skeptical that people are going to wear it like in outside of certain circumstances are going to wear them yeah. like yeah. i don't think people are going to stick glasses on for the you know for, for the ar features i'm really skeptical of that what if they put the features though inside your glasses like the glasses that you're wearing now leander well maybe i don't know i don't know if you want to be you know like I, one of the i i want to get away from technology a little bit rather than like yeah. get more into it except yeah. in certain circumstances where you have to use it like wearing right. it all the time though you'd probably drive you batty i don't know you might get used to having the heads-up display always there giving you information so when someone walks up and you're like i know that person but i can't yeah. remember their name it's like boom that's malt wasberg oh malt then you can finally <laughs> <laughs> give him that high five you've been trying to give him for the last five years i i think apple is years away from augmented reality goggles and yeah. the thing that the thing that they would have to do is they'd have to make them so slim 
and so fashionable that you'd want to wear them all the time because otherwise they're just going to be like VR goggles. And if you've ever worn VR goggles, they are not really comfortable. They're heavy. And it's not something that you would ever wear around in your daily life. It's something that you might wear for like 30, 40 minutes at a time and then you're done. So yeah, I'm with you, Buster. I think that, uh, I think that we're probably a ways off, but, but, but probably not going to have them anytime soon. Sorry, I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. My brain's like, nope, <laughs> nope, one or the other. So before we wrap up here, Tom Austin says, really enjoy these live shows. Thanks, chaps. Congrats on 300. <clears throat> I'm going to clear my throat so I can say a very heartfelt thank you to everyone watching, to everyone who's been with us for five years plus. Gosh, we're going on six years, actually. It's been, it's been five and a half years now. 300 episodes. And for all you masochists that have listened to every single one, I can just say, I feel your pain because I've edited <laughs> every single one. I have listened to probably close to a thousand hours of cult cast because I listen to it once when we do it. And then I listen to it again when I edit it <laughs> and it's just torturous. And the only reason I do it is because I know that, well, we have a great time making it number one, but number two, I know that you guys enjoy it. And that is what I, I would, I'm going to venture to guess is what keeps all of us doing it is knowing that people out there get to enjoy the conversation. And I, so many, many weeks when I'm releasing the episode, I say to myself, I can't believe anyone is going to listen to this. It's total rubbish to uh, describe it. How Leander probably describes it to all his friends and family. And I can't believe people listen to it. It surprises me that you guys keep tuning in every week. I'm surprised, but you do. And I am just so grateful for that because I enjoy doing it. I think we all enjoy doing it. And if it weren't for you, I know this is so cliche because everyone always says this, but if it weren't for you, we wouldn't get to do this. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Leander, did you want to say anything to anyone? I'm going to put you on the spot. Here. I'm just wondering when this is going to wrap up. This is like approaching a Blade Runner like Lex. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Buster, did you have anything you want to add? No. See you later. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. This has been the Cult Cast 300 live show extravaganza. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys 